Welcome back. In this part, we'll make the chessboard show up on screen. We begin in the main window.saml file inside the chess UI project. First, let's change the window's title to chess. and set window startup location to center screen. This will make the window appear at the center of the screen. I'll also name the main grid board grid. Okay, let's start the game. We are already rendering this board texture, but look what happens when I resize the window. The board scales with the window, but not the way we want. It should always be a square. To achieve this, we wrap the grid in a view box. And then we have to give the grid a fixed size. Let's set both its width and height to 600. Now the board is visible in the designer again, but why do we have those white edges? Both the board grid and the window are square. They have the same width and height. But when you set the window height, it includes the title bar as well. To make the board fit flush, we can get rid of the height. And instead, set size to content to height. If we start the program now, the board fits exactly inside the window and it scales correctly. but I don't like how the white background color looks. So let's change it to a dark color instead. Much better. Now we have a chessboard which scales nicely, but we also need to render the pieces. For that, we'll add a uniform grid inside the main grid. We can call it piece grid. And set both rows and columns to 8. You cannot see it because the uniform grid is empty, but there is now one cell covering each square on the board. Let me show you. If I add an image here and set its source to say the Black King asset, then a Black King shows up in the top left corner. And it stays there when we resize the window. We are going to add an image to each cell programmatically. So let's get rid of this image. And navigate to main window.saml.cs, which is known as the code behind. Here we'll use the chess logic namespace. Okay, first we create a 2D array for the image controls. I'll call it piece images.
it must have eight rows and eight columns to match the board, of course. Now we can write a method called initialize board. Here we'll loop over all positions. For each of them, we create a new image control. Store it in our 2D array. And add it as a child to our uniform grid. That's it. We'll call initialize board from the constructor after initialize component. We now have one empty image control for each square on the board. Using the piece images array, we can easily access the image control for a given square. The next step is to draw all the pieces on the board. But before we do that, we'll add a class called images. The purpose of this class is to load the pieces from the assets folder and make it convenient to access them. We need to use the chess logic namespace. and make the class static. Let's start by writing a little method called loadImage. It takes the relative path of an image as parameter. In the body, we return a new bitmap image where we pass in a URI with the given file path and specify that it's a relative path. Now we are ready to load the images. They will be stored in two dictionaries we start by adding one for the white pieces. The key is a piece type and the value is an image source. So the idea is that we can easily look up the correct image for a certain type of piece. Note that I've omitted the type on the right hand side. This won't work if you are using an older version of C Sharp. So in that case, just write the type there as well. Okay, now we can add the images. So for the pawn, We must load the white pawn asset for the bishop we need the white bishop asset and so on For the black pieces, we'll use a similar dictionary.
the contents will be the same, except that we load the black piece assets. So I'll just copy and paste here. And change the suffix to B. Make sure that you've typed the paths correctly. If you mess it up, the piece assets won't load correctly and will not show up on screen. Great. Now we can add a helper method called getImage. It takes the color and type of a piece and returns the corresponding image. So we switch on the color. If it's white, we look up the image for the given type in white sources. And if it's black, we look up in black sources. And otherwise, we just return null. We won't ever hit the last case, but Visual Studio will complain if we don't have it. Finally, we'll add an overload of get image, which takes a piece. If the piece is null, we return null and otherwise we use the other overload to get the right image. That's it for the images class. I'll just remove unused imports and then head back to the code behind for our main window. Now we can write a method called drawboard. It takes a board as parameter and will set the source of all image controls so they match the pieces on that board. With the piece images array and our images class, that's super easy to do. For each position, We grab the piece at that position and update the source of the corresponding image control accordingly. Now we can add a game state instance up here. and initialize it in the constructor. White starts the game and we pass in the initial board. To draw the board, we just have to call draw board like this. Let's see if it works. Indeed it does. All the pieces appear exactly where they should at the beginning of the game. 
I cannot move any of them yet, but that's coming soon. If we resize the window, everything scales nicely, but you may notice that the pieces don't look so crisp. Fortunately, that's easy to fix. Just go to the sample code, locate the piece grid, and set render options bitmap scaling mode to high quality. And let me just fix the layout so you can see everything. All right, let's try again. That looks much better. Now that we can render the pieces, we need to program how they move. So in the next part of this tutorial, we will work on move generation. See you then.